Welcome to the week eight workout problem video. So we're gonna do the workout problem for chapter three, and there's just one problem, so it should be pretty easy. So on chapter three, it's, it's problem number three that we're gonna be doing. So this is it right here. So suppose that a monopolistically competitive restaurant is currently serving 230 meals per day. Okay, and then the output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. At that output level, average total cost per meal is $10. And the consumers are willing to pay $12 per meal. So what is the size of this firm's profit or loss? So the profit or loss for each meal, let's figure that out first. So we have our uh, price is $12, right? So here's our price. So price is $12. Price. $12 and our average total cost, which basically is the cost per meal is $10, right? So then that leaves us uh, $2 of profit, right? So this is economic profit per mill. And then how many mills do we do? We have 230 mills that we're doing at that profit level, right? So it's gonna be uh, 230 and we're gonna multiply it, right? So then we got $460 should be our uh, profit at that level. Okay, so let's go back and talk. Next session. So, so will there be entry or exit into this uh, industry? Okay, so there's definitely gonna be entry so there's a $2 profit, and the way we've talked about it before, just to clarify, so the profits that we're talking about are economic profits, right? So that's above and beyond the normal profit. So the normal profit is where average total cost and the price are equal. And so we're talking about an economic profit here, and when there's a positive economic profit to be had, then there are entrants into the market. Let's keep going. It says, will this restaurant's demand curve shift left or right so we're and we're assuming that there's entrance into the market and so the way this looks is we've got uh let's say here let's draw this out so here's our it's quick and dirty here here's price here's quantity so here's our demand curve right and so if there's entrance into the market and this is for a single firm this is for uh, just the one restaurant. So assuming that we have more competition in the market, then the single firm's demand curve is going to decrease, right? And so what is the shift gonna be on that? The decrease is actually going to be to the left. Okay, so to the left, it's gonna shift to the left and decrease. So it's gonna to be to the left. And then our next one is says, uh, next part of the, the problem, it says in the long run equilibrium, right? In long run equilibrium, suppose that this restaurant charges, uh, suppose that this restaurant charges $11 per meal for 180 meals, and that the original cost of the 180th meal is uh, $8. Okay, so what is the size of the firm's profit. Well, we don't have to do any calculation, okay? Just by definition, because, and we're talking about a, a competitive, a monopolistic competitive firm, we know that in the long run, the firm's profit is a normal profit, right? There is no economic profit. And so that's the answer, right? So we don't have to calculate anything. We just know it is. So, and now, now we're moving on to the last part of, of the question. So it says, suppose that the allocatively uh, efficient output level 
in the long run equilibrium is 200 mils. Uh, and then now we're supposed, to, we're supposed to figure out is the dead weight loss from this firm greater than or less than $60? So going back to definitions, right? So uh, we're in a monopolistic competitive uh, industry. So is the, are the industries, do they operate efficiently, productively and allocatively? And the answer is no, they're inefficient, okay? So we're assuming up here in the, in the uh, upper, right, up here in this part, that that is where we are operating, okay? So we're operating at 180 mils in the long run. But now we're assuming that the efficient way to operate would be at 200 mils. And the efficient way to operate is actually where average total cost is at its least, right? So we need to now map out, we can map out and vision what our, uh, what our situation is. So let's, let's throw this over here. Okay, so let's, I'm just gonna open up a new screen here real quick. That didn't work. Okay, so here we go. So we can draw it out on white, that's not a problem. Okay, so let's draw this one out here real quick. All right, so here, here we have it. So this is our Okay, so here's our price, here's our quantity, right? And we've got our uh, demand flowing like that. So there's demand, all right? So in the long, in the long run, it says that we are operating at uh, 180, right? So 180 is right over here. Let's, let's change the color of our pin here. We'll change it to green. So we're at 180. Okay, so that's where we're operating currently. So we know because we're at 180, then that means our average total cost curve is gonna look something like this. It's gonna hit right, right at that curve, right? So that's average total cost. Okay, it's not gonna necessarily be, it's still gonna go down and then back up, right? So it's not gonna be at the most efficient place, but that's where it's gonna be because we have no uh, economic profit. This is just a normal profit situation. Okay, and we're gonna go over here. It's gonna be, uh, let's see, what was our price again? Our price was, uh, up here it was $11 per mil was the price. And marginal cost was $8. So let's go map that in here. So here's price was $11, okay. And down here, uh, so we'll say eight dollars was our marginal cost, and marginal cost uh, looks something like looks something like uh, let's change the color here. Marginal cost looks something like this, right? It's gonna look something like that, right? Okay, something like that. Okay, so that's where we're gonna operate and that's marginal cost this is our marginal cost all right and so now what it says in our question or in our in our little scenario here is it says at, in the long run the equilibrium is 200 mils you can actually look at a, if you if you open your book to page 284 you can see kind of a graph that l lays all this out as well so i'm just walking through this just to, to plug our numbers in that that we have here so, so here's, uh, here's the graph. So, so what that means is, is that right here, right at 200, right? 200 is where these are gonna meet. So that is the uh, allocative efficient uh, way to operate, okay? So if we were to, if we were to meet there, that would be the most efficient, give us the most consumer surplus and um, the best 
um, consumer and producer surplus. But instead, we're operating here. So the line would actually be right around here, right? And that would be the most efficient way. So, so up here is consumer surplus, SERP. And down here is the producer, SERP, surplus. So that's the op optimum ways in this black. But we're operating at this at this point. So this is uh, inefficient, right? inefficient okay so how inefficient is it so the question is 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 the day weight loss for this firm greater or less than sixty dollars so let's take a look at our graph here okay so we see that our dead weight loss is so we've got 20 units different right here's 20 units different here 20 mils right is the difference here so what is the difference up here the difference is three dollars right so 20 times 20 times 3 right we're gonna multiply these and it gives us sixty dollars is the difference between this point and this point basically this area right in here but we see that our line is curving right so we've got curving lines. We've got $60 could be the very max right here, right? And so let's go back and look at our question. Our question is, is the dead weight loss from this firm greater or less than $60? Most likely it's going to be less than $60, okay? So it's, it's not gonna be greater for sure. So $60 is the maximum, but we have the, the sloping uh, marginal cost curve and uh, average total cost curve, so it's going to be less than sixty dollars. And hopefully, this drawing it out in this manner kind of helps you see uh, how it all comes together. It gets in the end. I mean, it just looks like a big blobby mess, but kind of hopefully walking through it helps you understand the components that we're looking at to see okay, where's the inefficiency located. And what would be efficient, right? Because in a purely competitive market, it's totally efficient, okay? Um, but, but in this market, we're, we've got some inefficiencies here. Uh, and, and what that, the, the inefficiencies basically says this, and it's laid out like this in the book. At this point, we, this is our capacity. Capacity is really 200, right? That's where we, that's where we can, our ability to produce, we can produce 200 mils, but right now we're only producing 180. So we're inefficient. We've got uh, over capacity. We've got more tables than we need. We have a bigger oven than we need and all this stuff, which is typically how real businesses work, hopefully, right? But in the, in the long run, you want to be as lean and as efficient as possible especially when we're looking at the entire economy, we want to allocate allocative efficiency. We want to allocate all of our resources, our labor, our, our uh, equipment, our buildings, everything to the best of their ability just right so we meet the demand just right. If not, it's inefficient. So that's kind of where it, where it comes from and that's the theory anyways. So. Uh, I hope this helps, and if you have any further questions about the problem, feel free to send me an email or give me a call. Have a good day. Bye.